Bonjour. Today I'm going to be reminding you or teaching you how to form the conditional tense in French. I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can um, see it all in action. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about the conditional tense. We're also going to talk about C sentences. Um, C sentences, C means if, C sentences are really useful to boost your level. Um, so how do we and why do we use it first of all? Um, you use it to say would. So in English we've got a separate word for would. I would buy, I would go. But in French um, we just have to put the correct ending on the verb that we would do. Um, and we often use a conditional tense uh, with an if sentence. So if I won the lottery, I would buy a Ferrari. If I had the choice, I would go to Maldives on holiday. Um, so being able to um, put those two together is a, is a really useful thing. So the formation, you start with the infinitive of the verb. Um, and if it's an RE verb, you have to remember to remove the E first. Um, you always have to remember that you need an R at the end for the ending to hook onto in this conditional tense. So there's my little picture of an R hook to remind you that you have to have that R on the end for, for a conditional ending to hook onto to be able to make that would construction. Um, so then you add the correct ending depending on the subject of the verb. So who is doing the verb, who, who you're saying would do whatever it is. Um, you'll recognise these endings from the imperfect tense. Uh, so there we have our pronouns and the endings go like this. AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, AIENT. So je, I, AIS, tu, you, talking to a friend, AIS, il, elle, he, she, and on one or like the general kind of one we you can also mean as a general you uh, a-i-t nous we i-o-n-s vous you talking to um more than one person or talking to somebody that you're being formal with i-e-z and il and elle they il you would choose for a group of boys or a mixed group and L would just be a group of girls or more than one girl together. Uh, they, that is then A-I-E-N-T. Pronunciation wise, um, je, tu, il, elle, and il, and L, the bottom one, they're all pronounced the same. So it's E, 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 E. Okay, so even though the bottom one, the il and L, the they form, looks like it would be pronounced differently, it's not, it's just E as well. Okay, uh, and then you've got nous ayons, vous is ayez. Okay, so you will remember if you've been in my class and lots of other teachers in the department as well. We all sing a little song to help us remember this one. Um, so the song goes to the tune of uh, the the classical music that often accompanies horse riding. So it goes. A I S A I S A I T T T I O N S I E Z A I E N T. So you sing that lots and lots of times. A I S A I S A I T T T I O N S I E Z A I E N T. Sing it over and over again, and that will get that into your head. It will stick in there. So can you now pause the video, and can you remember those endings? Did you sing it enough times to help you remember the endings? Pause the video and have a think about it. Maybe write it down if you've got a piece of paper. So how did you get on? There they are. Have a little, have a little compare with what you've done. Did you get them right? Did you remember that? A-I-S, A-I-S, A-I-T, T, T, I-O-N-S, I-E-Z, A-I-E-N-T. Okay, so now we're gonna see it in action how you form it. So here are some regular verbs that I've given you. We've got manger, jouer, voyager, se relaxer, regarder, s'entendre. Uh, you will, I'm sure, recognise all of those. Um, so the way that it works is really, really straightforward with regular verbs. We've got manger, we've just put it here, just in front of the AIS. We've added the AIS onto the end of it, so it looks like this, je mangerai. And that now means I would eat. So because we've put that AIS onto the end of the infinitive, it now means I would eat. So then we've got jouer, to play. 
we're going to stick it in here, just in front of this ending here. There we go. Jouerai. So it becomes this. Tu jouerai. And that means you would play. Voyager, to travel. So let's have a look if we want to say he, she or we uh, would travel. There we go. So we'll go for he. So voyager, we've just stuck it in front of that ending. So it looks like this. Il voyagerait, he would, oh, travel, it should say. Um, then we've got uh, se relaxer. Now we need to be a little bit careful with se relaxer because you would notice that it is uh, a reflexive verb. You can tell it's a reflexive verb because it's got s at the beginning. So we need to have a couple of thoughts here. We need to think to ourselves, if it's a reflexive verb, how does it need to change for nous? So we need to think about our reflexive pronoun. We need to think about this s and whether it needs to change to fit with nous. And the answer is yes, it does. Nous, the reflexive pronoun of nous, is nous as well. So nous, nous. And then we add our ending on. It works just the same as the other ones, um, just the infinitive and then the ending. So there it is. Nous, nous, relaxerions. There we go. Nous, nous, relaxerions. We would relax. Now we've got vous. Nice, easy one. No um, reflexive pronoun to have to think about here. We can literally just stick it in front of that ending. There it goes. Vous regarderiez, you would watch. And then we've got a double thing to worry about here. Two warning signs. The first warning sign is that it is a reflexive. So we need to be thinking about what is the reflexive pronoun to fit with they. And um, it's also another warning sign. You may have noticed that it ends in an E. What was the, room, what was the thing that we had to do first with an RE verb? Because we always need that R hook. We have to remember to get rid of that E. So our, our thinking needs to be, right, what's the reflexive pronoun for they? And actually, the reflexive pronoun for they, handily, is still se. So we can just leave that looking like it is. Uh, then we need to get rid of that purple E. We need to get rid of the E so that the A-N-T can fit onto the end. So let's do that. There we go, We've got rid of the E. We've put the A-N-T on the end, and then it looks like this. Ils s'entendraient. They would get on with each other, okay? So it's quite straightforward. So what I'd like you to do now is uh, get yourself a piece of paper and pen, if you haven't already, uh, and pause this video and then have a go at translating all of these eight um, sentences, and not quite sentences, but have a go at translating these eight examples of the conditional tense. Okay, here are the answers. How did you get on? So we've got il aimerait, elle resterait, nous, nous utiliserions, or you could use en utiliserait, je rirais, elle danserait, tu parlerais, mes parents choisiraient, mon frère achèterait. So you can notice for the, each of those ones that there's a ré sound at the end, and that's really what we're listening out for um, with the conditional tense. Okay, hope you got on okay with those. So that would all be great if all the verbs were regular. However, French wouldn't be as fun if there weren't lots of irregular verbs. And the problem with language is that the more you use certain verbs, uh, the more they get corrupted and changed over time. And that's what happens with these irregulars. We've got them in English too, we just don't notice um, because we've just been brought up speaking it. But in French, we have to learn it. So here are your irregulars. So être, to be, goes to ser. Uh, avoir, to have, goes to or. Aller, to go, goes to ir. Faire, to do or to make, goes to faire. Voir, to see, goes to ver. Uh, pouvoir, to be able to, goes to pour. Venir, to come, goes to viendre. Vouloir, to want to, goes to voudre. And you know that one because of je voudrais. Uh, devoir, go, uh, to have to, goes to devre. And I think, oh, savoir, uh, to know, uh, usually to know a fact. Um, goes to sort. So we cannot 
put our ending and do what we would do with normal, normal regular verbs onto these ones, onto the first ones. We have to use their irregular stems and we put them um, in front of, the, um, of that ending that we have to add, and add onto the end. Um, so here is a whole big table with all of these where you can see that the endings always are exactly the same as we've been looking at. It's just the, the case that we have to use the different stem for these particular verbs. And like I said, unfortunately, it's verbs that we use all the time. So we just have to learn them. So here we go. So I've got a few um, examples for you, a few um, times that you can have a little look at it in practice. So there we go. So we've got je, être, has to be sur, so je serai means I would be. Avoir, to have, needs to be or. So now this means you would have. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. Aller was ir, so now this one means he, she, or we, one, would go. Nous, fer, so there we go, stick that one on there. Nous ferions, we would do. Vous verriez, so you would see. And il and elle pourraient, they would be able to. Okay, so again, if you could please pause this video um, and you've got a little bit of translation practice to do. So have a little look at this, um, these ones here, think about what we'd just looked at what we've just done. And a little bit of vocabulary in that box to help you if you need it. Or a little bit of a, a reminder, I should say, of those irregular um, stems. Okay, so hope you managed to do okay there. So we've got um, je ferai, il serait, elle viendrait, il saurait, nous verrions, vous iriez, je devrais, and on pourrait. Hopefully you managed to get those right. So on to um, the C sentences then and how we can really boost our, um, our level of what we're writing or speaking about. Um, there's a little uh, formula to remember that you have to use C plus the imperfect plus the conditional. So an example of this is if I was rich I would or if I won the lottery I would. So it's that imperfect was, won, had, whatever it might be and then I would. Um, you can switch it around and say I would do something if I was rich. So you can switch it, switch it around like that. But those two always go in the um, in the sentence together. So here's a couple of examples, or here's a way that you could use this example. So uh, si j'étais riche, if I was rich, j'irais wherever it might be on on Italy. If I was rich, I would go to Italy. Si j'avais le temps, um, je verrais something rather, if I had the time, I would see. Uh, si j'avais le temps, je verrais um, la tour Eiffel. Um, si je pouvais, uh, j'achèterais something. So if I was able to, si je pouvais, I would buy. Si je pouvais, j'achèterais um, une grande maison en France. Um, si je gagnais au loto, so if I won the lottery, uh, si je gagnais au loto, um, je resterais dans un hôtel de luxe. Um, si c'était possible, if it was possible, si c'était possible, ma famille et moi ferions uh, le tour du monde. If it was possible, my family and I would do the tour of the world. And notice here, my family and my family and me, is how they say it in French, my family and me, and then would do, 
we've got the nu form here because you, you are in the group with your family. Okay, so it's the we form. Uh, and lastly, mes parents me permettaient, si mes parents me permettaient, I should say, je serais, um, I don't know, what could we say, acrobat. So if my parents allowed me, I would be an acrobat. So hopefully you can see how it works there. Uh, last time to pause the video and have a go at these, please. So write these down in French, um, and then in a minute you can come and see how well you did. Here we go. Si j'avais le temps, je ferais plus de natation. If I had more time, I would do more swimming. Si c'était possible, ma famille irait en France. If it was possible, my family would go to France. Be careful here. My family, it's singular. Okay, so therefore we use the AIT. You wouldn't use the they form here. You use the singular form, the she form, really, because it's feminine singular. Uh, en France, to France. Remember, that's the way you say to. Uh, si mes parents me permettaient, J'aurais un piercing. So if my parents allowed me, I would have a piercing. Si je pouvais, je parlerais euh, le français tout le temps. Um, number five, si je, si j'étais riche, je verrais je verrais le monde. And number six, si je gagnais au loto, j'achèterais un yacht. One last thing to mention. It's always worth thinking about negatives whenever we're talking about a new tense and just remembering where our nerves and pas are going to go. Um, so here in exactly the same way as ne and pa works for the present and ne and pa works for uh, the imperfect and other tenses where there's just one word to me to do a whole tense um, it works the same in in the conditional so we do the ne verb pa so we've got je mangerai i would eat so to say i would not eat you just say je ne mangerai pas um, the next one they would go we want to say they wouldn't go. Il n'irait pas. Notice we've had to go uh, and get rid of the E on the N so that there's not two vowels together. So that's why we've made that N apostrophe. Um, and then last one, je, j'aurais, I would have. We've split them up. So we've divided up je and aurais. Um, we put the N in between. So now we're going je n'aurai pas. So aurai has got that vowel at the beginning, which is why we need an N apostrophe. Okay. And the J apostrophe has changed back to je because now it's not next to an, a vowel anymore. Now it's next to a consonant. Now it's next to the N. Uh, and that now means I would not have. And we've got a few other little negatives over here. If you want to mix it up a bit and make it a bit more interesting, instead of just saying I would not eat, you could say I would never eat. Uh, instead of saying uh, they wouldn't go, you could say they will. Uh, they would no longer go. Um, I wouldn't have. You could say um, I wouldn't have anything. Je n'aurai rien. So you've got lots of different options that you could do with your negatives there. Okay, so that's it. You have had your recap or your lesson on the conditional tense, and hopefully that's going to make the rest of um, the work that you do on the conditional a little bit easier.